guy's probably fought hundreds of thousands of other super beings on the other planets he's destroyed, right? And we have to assume he's won. I don't care how many demons he's fought and how many hells. He's never fought us. Not us united. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my new Justice League Snyder Cut trailer video. They just posted a new one. There's some new scenes that they worked in. Obviously, it's black and white. I'll explain what's going on with that. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We'll do a new Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and let me know what your favorite Easter egg is from the trailer. Zack Snyder actually did a lot of commentary for this this morning himself. He's actually been going on a lot of podcasts recently talking about the movie, what his plans are. I think he's done at least three different fan podcasts. He probably has the best relationship of any big director of big studio films with his fandom. So it is really cool to see him interacting with fans in that big way. And he did say that they have big plans for a special marketing campaign when they actually release the Snyder Cut on HBO Max next year. But the reason why they released this new version of the trailer in black and white today, November 17th, is because it's the anniversary of the release of the Justice League theatrical cut. The reason why it's black and white is because Zack Snyder said that he wanted to release a black and white version of the movie theatrically. But I think he said that he fought with the studio on that, like they were not too hot on the idea of releasing a black and white version of a movie this big. You may remember that they did the exact same thing for Hugh Jackman's Logan movie, for that last Wolverine movie. They let James Mangold add a black and white cut of the movie to the Blu-ray release, but I don't think they wound up releasing that theatrically. So there is precedent for them doing black and white cuts of movies that were actually shot in color before. Zack Snyder also said that he would like to do a limited theatrical release, so I'll explain that in a second too, particularly an IMAX release, just because of the way he shot the movie. But there is the chance that they release two different versions of this on HBO Max next year. They also kind of did that with the Simpsons episodes on Disney Plus, where you have the 4x3 aspect ratio, but you also have the widescreen zoom version. But you have to switch between those manually in the settings menu. So it's not like it's impossible to release two different cuts of a movie on these platforms. But one of the first new scenes here is the scene of Superman taking flight, just as part of this scene that we've seen of Ben Affleck's Batman staring up at his boots. There were always lots of theories about what he was looking at here. Most people thought that it was Superman. Some people even thought that it might be Supergirl. I think because Zack Snyder in the past had talked about a version of Supergirl existing within the universe and sort of teasing the idea that she might appear someday. But because we get the full version of this scene, now you can actually see what's happening here. It's just Cyborg projecting a version of Superman taking flight as they're standing around talking about him before he's come back to life because they're all standing around in their street clothes. So this is just a slightly different version of one of these scenes here really early in the movie. The way Zack Snyder talked about it, none of the scenes in his version of the movie will look at all like the scenes from the theatrical cut. But talking a little bit more about the aspect ratio, notice in this Aquaman scene here around the edges of the frame. For a little bit here, they actually go rounded and then go back to square. That's just an effect of the lens while they were filming these scenes. And I'm assuming that because these are the official trailers, it might wind up looking like this during the movie itself. But he's still in the middle of post-production, so we'll have to wait till they release some more trailers to see what changes between this trailer and those trailers. I think back when they made Batman be Superman, I remember some of the earlier trailers looked a little bit different just because the clips they were using weren't completely done when they were releasing those trailers. But the actual reason why this trailer is square, 4x3 looking aspect ratio, is because that's the aspect ratio that he shot the movie in. Really, it's meant to be IMAX aspect ratio, true IMAX with the giant square screens, the really huge ones. He said that he just fell in love with that style when he was working on the IMAX portions of Batman v Superman. So eventually, when it came time to film Justice League, he just decided to do the entire movie like that. But when Joss Whedon came on the project, the studio decided to release a 16 by 9 aspect ratio version. So you have to imagine them just zooming in on a lot of the footage that Zack Snyder filmed. But when you do that, you wind up losing a lot of the footage at the bottom and the tops of the frames. There's a whole bunch of new cyborg scenes in this version of the trailer. There's a new scene of cyborg in his apartment earlier in the movie, watching kids playing football in the street, just remembering what his life was like before the accident, before he became cyborg. That's why right before this scene in the trailer, they show you him playing football at Gotham University with his mom cheering him in the crowd. I believe that they've also posted some previews of the other scene of him and his mother in the car before their big accident. 
I think his mother's supposed to have a death scene during the movie as part of his origin story. And most of you have probably seen at least some version of Cyborg's origin story in the comics or the animated series or the animated movies. They're all relatively similar. His father runs Star Labs, but he's too busy to be a really good dad, too engrossed in his work. There's an accident, and it's only by fusing Cyborg with the mother box that allows him to survive. But the way they treat that story in some of the more recent versions, like especially Young Justice, is a bit more like a horror story. Like he briefly loses his mind as the mother box tech, or father box tech in the case of Young Justice, starts reprogramming his mind until he's able to assert his own dominance over it. There was a little bit of that story during the Justice League theatrical cut where the mother box tech just automatically responds to the threat of Superman with hostility, just arming up a bunch of weapons. Some of the mother box cannon made it into the theatrical cut. For instance, we know Steppenwolf is going to look very different, way more hardcore. But remember in the theatrical cut when he kept talking about the unity and talking to the mother boxes like they were a person, calling them mother? That's because originally, according to some of the changes that people talked about in the theatrical cut, the life force of Steppenwolf's mother, Hegra, was actually supposed to be trapped inside the three mother boxes, and by combining them, creating the quote-unquote unity that he kept talking about in the movie, he'd be able to reunite the pieces of her and use her true power. But for instance, during his commentary, Zack Snyder talked about Darkseid combining the mother boxes to create the unity and unleash the anti-life equation. So even though there have been a bunch of retcons in the comics and the way they explain where the anti-life equation comes from and what it's all about, it sounds like Darkseid is using the mother boxes in combination with the anti-life equation. The Omega Force is a little bit different though. Darkseid actually stole that from his older brother. He sort of usurped the throne of Apocalypse, taking the Omega Force. That's what gives him the Omega Beams, his near invincibility. That's where the Omega symbol in his chest comes from, the Omega symbol that's burned into the ground. He just starts using that as his branding symbol. This is another new scene of Batman in the Batmobile from the final battle taking out some parademons, intercut with another new scene of Hippolyta fighting what looks like Steppenwolf and the parademons inside their temple of Themyscira where they kept the mother box. I'm assuming in the Snyder Cut version of the movie, even though the movie is supposed to be over four hours long, this scene of Steppenwolf coming to Earth still happens relatively early in the film. This scene of the Flash running around mid-air seems kind of like a prelude to him using the Speed Force to time travel or maybe a multiverse easter egg, just the way it seems so different from how they visualize his regular running ability. Way back at DC Fandom, Zack Snyder was hyping up new abilities, quote unquote, that the Flash would have that we haven't seen before with Patty Jenkins and made it sound like he'd be doing some time traveling or some multiverse easter eggs, just as a prelude to the Flash Flashpoint movie. The other brand new thing from the past week that a lot of you are messaging me about was all the Martian Manhunter teasing that Zack Snyder was doing. During one of those, he flashed this concept art and picture of Harry Lennox's Martian Manhunter. Separately, Harry Lennox himself has also been hyping it up, so I don't know which part of the movie this is supposed to fit into, and I don't know if he always intended it to be this way. But now it seems like it's official, like he wouldn't be posting this if he didn't intend to pay it off at some point. I haven't seen him talk much more about the Green Lantern stuff in the movie recently. I think he's still holding most of that close to the vest. I've talked a little bit about the original plans for post credit scenes with Green Lanterns, but those weren't meant to be Hal Jordan Green Lanterns. It was just meant to be Kilwag and Tomar Ray. As far as I know, Zack Snyder isn't going to be involved in the Green Lantern HBO series or the new Green Lantern Corps movie that they're still planning on making at some point. But now, whatever happens with Green Lantern stuff in the movie, it seems like it'll be contained to what Zack Snyder is calling the Snyderverse of movies, the movies that he made inside the DCEU. And I think what they'll do is, is once they do these new movies, they'll use the Flash, Flashpoint movie in the idea of the multiverse, the DC multiverse, to sort of connect everything so that it all eventually makes sense, even though it seems a little complicated right now. The way that Andy Muschietti explained it, the director of the Flash movie, is that they're going to use the multiverse to explain how everything from the comics, the classic movies like Christopher Reeve's Superman, Michael Keaton's Batman, can be connected to the newer DC movies and the DCEU movies that Zack Snyder made. It's the exact same thing that they did with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, getting really meta with the way it tried to canonize everything from all the previous versions of Spider-Man movies, TV shows, and comics, even the animated stuff like Spider-Pig. Zack Snyder also did clarify what was going on with future DC projects. He said that he did have a script for Justice League 2, but just a couple days ago, he clarified that he says that he never expects that he'll be able to make that, which I think also means that the Batman Dark Knight Returns Frank Miller movie that he also talked about making probably won't wind up happening anytime soon. 
I think short term, if the Justice League Snyder Cut goes really well for them, then there is always the chance that he does another HBO Max series with some other IP that might not necessarily be DC Comics IP. And as for Wonder Woman 1984, originally they were going to release the movie on Christmas, but because we're heading into what seems like another lockdown around the world, Deadline was reporting that right now Warner Brothers is thinking about releasing it on HBO Max around Christmas Day, but simultaneously releasing it in theaters some places around the world where theaters are still open. The other option is for them to just delay the movie to the summer. So you guys can let me know in the comments whether or not you'd rather just have them release it on HBO Max and in some theaters simultaneously around Christmas or just wait to the middle of next year to see it. What's going to happen is, is I have a couple other Mandalorian Season 2 videos that I'm going to make this week for Bo-Katan, The Darksaber. My Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 4 video will post on Friday. There'll probably be some more DC videos and Marvel, so leave all your requests in the comments below. While you wait for everything, click here for my full Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 3 video and click here for my brand new Mandalorian Season 2 Ahsoka Tano video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.